apologize for being black. For all I am plus all I lack. Please, sir, please, ma'am, give me some slack, because I apologize. I apologize. Oscar Brown Jr. was born and raised on the south side of Chicago and attended Inglewood High School. The singer, songwriter, playwright, and poet was also an outspoken civil rights activist. Brown's work inspired Kennedy King College professor Corey Hall. In 2005, he founded the publication Expressions from Inglewood, featuring poetry and essays from people of all ages in the community. On the surface, you may see a lot of degradation, a lot of negativity, but if you look a little bit deeper and actually speak to the people and give them a chance, you'll see that they have a lot of talent. But what does art and activism mean? To help answer the question, we met with Dr. Haki Madabudi, a poet, educator, and founder of the Third World Press in Chicago. He is considered one of the architects of the black arts movement. Uh, art is what makes us human. Uh, which makes us uh, a caring people, all right? And you can tell a people who are essentially a caring people by looking at the art in their lives. The first black poor in residence at an Ivy League school, Cornell University, Dr. Matabuti counts among many of his heroes, Gwendolyn Brooks. She was the first African-American poor to win the Pulitzer Prize and was named Poet Laureate of Illinois in 1968. Matabuti says art saved his life, he says, without art, an entire community can be diminished. What motivates you? You mean, what, 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 what drives you to do good work? And for me, it has always been art. How many years must a mountain Performers like Joan Baez and John Coltrane had a great effect on many artists in the 1960s. And we cannot forget Gil Scott Heron. Because the revolution will not be televised. Well, Gil Scott Heron, who just passed, um, I preceded Gil Scott Heron, but he was very effective in terms of influencing a lot of the rap artists and young artists today. No. It's okay. Get away from me! Okay. Film is another artistic vehicle for expressing a certain point of view. Say one movie that I can think about, it came out in 2005, called Crash, which I think is one of the best examples of trying to start a discussion on race. Art and activism reached a new level in the 1960s. How does it compare with today? Dr. Hamada Budi says, with a few exceptions, many young artists today are not utilizing their talents for the common good. Too many artists are not involved on the ground, are not involved with young people, are not involved with understanding that their images mean something. Hamada Budi says he sees nothing positive about going to jail and singing about it in a rap song. We cannot always gravitate toward the lowest common denominator. And I think that the best artists are moving, always moving toward what is the best. How do we create at a level that's going to inspire other people to be better than they think they can become? Reporting for the professors on WYCC, I'm Cameron Frazier. From across the city and the seven city colleges of Chicago, broadcasting from 63rd and Halstead at Kennedy King College, the professors taking the art of conversation to a higher degree. Hello, I'm Temple Hemphill. On today's edition of The Professors, we explore the world of the arts and activism, how one defines it, and where is it today? Joining us today are Suri Taufignia, a documentary filmmaker, Dr. Haki Matabudi, founder of Third World Press, and Professor Corey Hall, publisher and editor of Expressions from Inglewood. Thank you all for joining us today. Art and activism. Dr. Matabudi, in front of you, you have a book titled Honoring Genius, Gwendolyn Brooks. It's one of your, uh, the 31st book or so, one of the books you've, you've written, 31 books. Yeah. Um, so read just a couple stanzas. Uh, you have a poem about art. Right, perhaps. I'm primarily a poet okay. uh, who is a publisher. Uh, art is fundamental instruction and food for a people's soul as they translate the many languages and acts of becoming often telling them in no uncertain terms that all humans are not pure or perfect. However, the children of all cultures inherit their creator's capacity to originate from the bone of their imagination, the closest manifestations to purity, perfection, and beauty, art. Art at its best encourages us to walk on water, dance on top of trees, and skip from star to star without being able to swim, keep a beat, or fly. A child's own fire imagination is a one universal prerequisite for becoming an artist. Art allows and encourages the love of self and others. 
The best artists are not mass murderers, criminals, or child molesters. They're in the beauty and creation business. Art is elemental to intelligent intelligence, work in democracy, freedom, equality, and justice. Art, if used wisely and widely, early and often, is an answer and a question. It is the cultural lake that the indigenous rivers of dance, music, local images, and voices flow. Art is the waterfall of life, reflecting the ultimate and unique soul of a people. Art is the drumbeat of good and great hearts forever seeking peace and a grand future for all enlightened peoples. For these are the people of the world over who lovingly proclaim, give the artist some. Kind words, financial support, yeses from the heart, knowing intuitively that there will be creative reciprocity in all that they give us. Why? Because fundamentally, art inspires, informs, directs, generates hope, and challenges the receiver to respond. And finally, and this is consequential, the quality of the art determines the quality of the responses. Mm. Very, very good. I think we should snap for that, right? Is that what they do? Yeah. <laughs> uh, poetry halls, right? That's, um, one line that stood out, challenges, art challenges the receiver to respond. Um, what led you to even decide to use your art as activism? Well, growing up around, you know, pimps and holes slamming Cadillac dolls on the west side of Chicago, <laughs> uh, inspiration comes in many forms. Right. And at 14, I read Richard Wright's Black Boy uh, and in less than 24 hours. And you turn every page and it slaps you in the face and wake up Negro. And shortly after that, I began to read in other genres other than nonfiction, literary nonfiction, fiction, and poetry. And of course, studying and finding the poets of our tradition, it began to essentially give me a guidepost and saying, you can do this also. Mm -hmm. And so what really pushed me was Malcolm X, El Haj Malika Al Shabazz, coming into this urban area of Chicago and Detroit. <clears throat> Malcolm X spoke to me okay. as to other young men and women of uh, my generation. Mm -hmm. And he inspired me to move on uh, into using art as a weapon, as a, uh, a means of not only communication, but a means of organization. Organization. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and Suri, who influenced you? Well, I think, you know, I agree a lot with what the doctor's saying. And also, I mean, it comes really from being a child and my family and sort of this belief that we, if we believed in something, we can see it to fruition. And so as I grew older and decided to become a filmmaker, you know, my influences were many that were in the package actually. Um, you know, a lot of the poets and, mm -hmm. and writers and singers of the 60s, um, I feel like I'm just carrying on the legacy that others who came before me. So from film perspective, there's a lot of great talent from Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is Ron Pitts. He's a filmmaker who worked a lot in social justice movements mm -hmm. and he's a friend of mine, I'm proud to say. And also Haskell Wexler is another one who, you know, being around people who take up cameras and just want to document injustice to try to create change, I think for me that is at the center of everything I do. And you know, it's it's basically a personal journey that I carry on with my so little son. So started as a child, as you're saying. Yeah, and, exactly. And you, you Dr. Matabudi, uh, you talked about just a little while ago how your the seeds were planted early on right. by reading Richard Wright, yes, right? And absolutely. Corey, uh, what, who influenced you? As I believe artist, you said Oscar Brown. Right, as an mm -hmm. artist and a publisher thinking about expressions, I would say Oscar Brown Jr. for sure, because he went into the projects and found that talent. It's almost like someone could say, look at the projects, what do you see? Oh, degradation, drugs, death. Well, he saw talent, and he brought that talent out. And like I mentioned in the opening, people think about Inglewood, they just want to think about gunpowder and shoot them up. Well, this is Chicago. It's in all 50 wards, all around Chicago. Just Inglewood gets the worst. Wonder why? Well. The, the, the students at the school, Kennedy King College, have tons of talent, and that is seen in the books itself. Now, as far as the publisher, which I've just become in the last several years, I'd have to say the man sitting across the table from me, Dr. Matabuti, who started his publishing company uh, off a mimeograph machine in Inglewood. In Inglewood, right. Right, right. right. so mm -hmm. it's, it's like uh, passing it down. Mm -hmm. He did it in 
66, thereabouts. 67. 67. And I started Inglewood, expressions from Inglewood as an idea in my head. Mm -hmm. It was going to be called Statements, but then I said, let's get a better title than so that. So Expressions from mm -hmm. Inglewood, it, it is your direct give back in terms of your activism. To the community, yes. To the community. Um, has it, it, let's talk about um, the activism. Just it, when you started the project, mm -hmm. did you go in thinking this would be activism or did it just evolve organically? I think it evolved. When we start these projects, you want to do just your best. You don't say, well, I'm going to start a revolution here or I'm going to uh, turn the world around. You just want to do something positive and give it out to whoever wants to receive it positively. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they do receive it in a positive, positive way. And what about you all in terms of activism? Did you go in saying, I want to be an activist? Was that term ever, did you word it that way? Well, one, One's work guides one to what one does in life. And I, as a, as a poet and um, as a publisher, uh, but also, first, I'm a black man in America. And coming of age during a period where uh, black people were at the bottom of the uh, ladder, uh, it required that if you're conscious, if you're serious, that you're going to try to move toward uh, providing and trying to be changed uh, in that community. Uh, I will say that, yes, Third World Press was founded here in Inglewood, but also I attended Wilson Junior College. I'm a graduate of Wilson Junior College, which of course now is Kennedy King. And during that period when I was here, uh, it, uh, the, the whole school was active in terms of trying to make significant political changes. Mm -hmm. and, and so do you miss those days in terms of that fire that the community? Well, uh, no, not me, because we're still in the fire. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I went on to the military. Well, I, well, I, I was in the military and then came out of the military and went to uh, Wilson, then Roosevelt, and eventually you know, did graduate work at Iowa. But for the last for 26 years, I was on the faculty at Chicago State University, right. and we developed the MFA program and, and other institutional structures there. But also we have Third World Press Foundation, and we have the uh, Institute of Positive Education. We have four schools here in Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, the Betty Shabazz, um, International Charter School, the um, Barbara and Sizemore Academy, which is Ingl in Inglewood, mm -hmm. and the uh, DuSable uh, Leadership Academy and New Concept School. So the activism moves from really the streets to try to move toward institutionalization of our thoughts and action. That's why we have Third World Press, Third World Press Foundation, and our schools. And so when you talk about, so it's the writing, the publishing, and the writing, and then also your activism is shown in education. Absolutely. Um, Surrey, mm -hmm. is, have you, uh, I believe you talked about the G8 summit coming up. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about how w you're an art activist, mm -hmm. however that evolves in terms of activism. It, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think as a filmmaker, I have the, the fortune to pick what I think is the greatest art form because I get to work with poets and writers and journalists and musicians and visual artists and theater people. And, and you know, what I guess ultimately inspires our work are the people that we work with, that we collaborate with, right? So the issues that are important to contemporary Americans and internationally when I do work, you know, because I believe we're all connected, Anyway, you know, I see my activism as just developing a relationship to present what what we all believe in a, as this dream, you know, and, and so I find it challenging to consider myself solely an activist because then I feel like I'm fighting against something, like I'm being active against because I believe that everyone should think the way that we think as human humanist, as people on this planet, you know, we all have to kind of evolve and so I, I feel like we're just moving forward and, and I like to think that we're forward thinkers. You know, that, that we're just living with the people that came behind us and, and we're going to push it forward. Mm -hmm. Like, like um, Corey was mentioning, I think that's a great point. And a lot of the film work that we do is also mentoring. You know, I, I find that, you know, I have this camera, but why can't I give this camera to someone that I'm working with who's like following me around everywhere I go that happens to be 10, 12 years old and they have a story to tell. So we work a lot in communities all around the country and world to train youth to tell their own stories in their own voice, and I think that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. The mentoring, I yes. did read about your the mentoring. Mm -hmm. And how important is it for you to mentor, to give back in that capacity? You know, I, I laugh because I'm just kind of at the beginning of my career still too, I feel, but yet I'm like 
putting a lot of effort into giving back. So I feel like it's just parallel sharing. You know, it's just like they have a lot to give me. Mm -hmm. And selfishly, I can say, okay, come carry my camera around today and, and I'll teach you some things. But I feel like it's creating those voices and just giving people, like it seems like your book's done too, is, is, is letting people kind of shine on their own. And, and, and if we give them an, uh, a publish, you know, opportunity or a video opportunity, then, you know, telling their stories in their own voice about their own experience, that's just going to inform all of us. And so I feel like it's partially selfish, too, my mentorship is just to learn from all those around To learn. Me. To learn. Yeah. And we talked about um, social media earlier mm -hmm. as well. A lot of um, people are looking at, uh, are able to express their mm -hmm. voice due to social media. Do you all want to talk about that at all? Well, social media, that's a good vehicle to get the word out. But I, when I've done it, I've been a little bit frustrated because I've mentioned that Expressions has gone to the, to the printer, Expressions is out, a couple of people will like it. And then somebody else will come on Wednesday and say, happy hump day, and 15 people will respond. I don't understand that. You're, you're talking about Facebook? Yes. Okay, or, in, I mean, or any Can I get an answer about the activism part? Mm -hmm, sure. As teachers, as educators, which we all are, whether we're in front of a classroom or not, no matter how, old, how much older or younger the student is from you, you're still up there as the teacher. So things that we know, we've known probably for a long time, whatever it is, well, they don't know that. So even if something you say something, you say, well, I've known this for years, well, they don't. So don't, don't reserve judgment, excuse me, reserve judgment, teach it. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, that's how you, you do it by, by instruction. Even the simplest things, like sending an email, sending an email attachment. We do that all the time, but some people don't know. So what, teach them. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's what, that's what the, the purpose of education is. I mean, mm -hmm. where we're at right now, we have everything from foundational studies to Latin. So what, if they need it, teach it. And you're doing that, Dr. Matabuti. I overheard you say that when you donate books to the penal system throughout mm -hmm. the, the country, you have the particular inmate write book reports based on uh, book titles, right? right. And, and well, so, and then you send them more if you receive them. Correct. Mm -hmm. They were pressed as a foundation. Inmates just write us and request literature. And we will send them free three titles. We pick the titles. And in order for them to get three more titles, they have to write at least a page of the three titles that we sent them each on each book. Mm -hmm. And we also request that they share the books with other inmates. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but let me just say this about Sherry, Sherry and uh, Corey. This is the current generation. All right, I'm you know, past my time almost. But these, this is the. And this is why it's so important that we're here today, is that they are doing the work that needs to be done, all right? Uh, expressions from, from Inglewood, for the most part, comes out of his pocket. The college does not pay for this. He's paid for this out of his pocket. And he cares, and this is what I did in the beginning, too. You carry the books around with you and sell them whenever you can. And I'm sure that Sherry, in terms of her work, a lot of it's coming out of her pocket also. Yes, grants and, uh, are available for, for foundations, but that's a whole another process. But for people who are serious, for artists who are serious, they are not worrying about the grants. They're worried about how can I get this work done? Where am I gonna get this next camera from? Where am I gonna get this film? And so forth, whatever the case may be. So it, it is really, for me, to be here among these two young people are really a joy in seeing the kind of work that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that's an honor coming from you for sure. And it's inspiring because when you see someone who's been like sort of a, now you're at the, the top of your career, maybe not, maybe you still got, mm -hmm tons more to go but you know I feel like that's where we get a lot of our fuel from you know because we have to carry this torch on because if we don't what's going to happen you know and I joke a lot about oh I wish I could just get another job and just I was telling my partner last night can't we just give this all up all this social justice stuff and can't we just go live somewhere in Tahiti and just forget everything and he goes but what would we do after like a day of drinking margaritas or something we would want to be back with the people because like one of his mottos is as long as there's one child hungry, mm. he's gonna be fighting. Cause you know, I'm honored to, to associate with people who have been in the trenches their whole life. And when I see those lights in those little kids that I teach and I think, did that kid get breakfast today? Mm -hmm. You know, is that why they're crabby? Is that why mm -hmm. they're distracted? You know, there's always something behind that. And so I think it's up to us as educators and activists and artists to try to shine. So, so people that just watch the news can get behind these neighborhoods. You know, I work a lot in Native American communities right now and, you know, talk about marginalized populations. You know, they're not even on the map. They're starting to get to be understood and ex 
accepted as you know people fighting for social justice but we would just as an American country much rather say wait didn't we kill all them 500 years ago when we colonized this country and so you know a lot of our work comes from the fight that's been going on for people to just protect their land and their way of life which to me is really inspiring you mm -hmm. know and, and and I feel like as an American it's our duty to kind of live up to that to say you know it's equal rights for everyone it doesn't mean just the ones we've already established equal rights for. So then how, we're all artists here, mm -hmm. but for someone who's watching and they're just trying to meet their mortgage and trying to make sure their kids stay in school, yeah. how, how do you have that conversation with them in terms of it's everyone's responsibility in terms of uh, giving back and, and watching over each other's children and what have you? How do you have that? It's, it's not easy. Uh, we, we operate four schools. Uh, we service over a thousand children a day uh, in what we say is an a, a African-centered arts program where art, books are the center of, of and, and music, uh, film are the center of our program. And K through eight is fine because you're getting young people whose minds are still like sponges mm -hmm. and, and we're able to get them in an environment that, that, that fosters creativity. The problem is high school because the streets have taken over mm. in many cases. And I tell young people all, all the time that if, 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 if street culture was liberating, why are we not free? Mm -hmm. All right? Mm. Why are you not able to essentially walk down the streets in, at night without looking over your shoulders? All right? We're in deep trouble. So art is critical. It's very important. You can go to the average person's home and what is in that home defines them. And for the most part, whether it's in the uh, Latino, Latino community, the Asian community, or the black community, or whatever, you do not see art as being primary. I mean, visual art, or the expression from, from books, or film, all right? So we need to change that metric, you see? And I think that when art impacts people at the way it was meant to impact people, then we come out of different people, a whole people. If people are able to respond in a way, in a, in a loving way to each other, mm -hmm. rather than in a hostile way that we find too often in, in our communities today. So you all would agree that art is meant for healing. We, we oh, think absolutely. of the healing. Is, yeah. Do you think of that when you think of, of healing, when you are putting together the next volume of expressions from Inglewood? Healing and inspiration, mm -hmm. because passing out the books in classrooms uh, that I could do at the very beginning when before the price of, of uh, publication went up. But anyway, the students would go through the table of contents and see their friends in that book published. I said, well, you can be in there too. Just stay in class, show up on time and turn in good essays. And uh, healing for sure. I mean, it's, it's something that it's an expression. When you have something in your head, whether it's a business idea or a hurt feeling, whatever it is, it's up here and here too, but when it's on that computer screen or on the page, it's, it is a different world. And if you get to perhaps tell that to an audience that you haven't met before, or give that letter to the person who may have hurt you, or you may have hurt, it, it, that's a different world, and that may be a, a way of healing. Uh, that's why I did that fifth edition. Part of the theme was forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And people who've read that, the forgiveness part, they talk about how that has, mm -hmm they were just blown away by some of the things that the first essay in there about forgiveness is someone who has, uh, she has lupus. And when she was in high school, you know, it affects you physically, her face, mm -hmm. how people in the high school uh, group of boys just made fun of her all the time, just called her Jaws all the time. Mm -hmm. And she eventually, through her mother, found a way to forgive them within herself. And she had a brother too who could be a little bit of an enforcer, so that, <laughs> yeah, do a little bit of that too. But as far as the forgiveness part, it's, that's something that is hard to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you at least write it out and express it to someone, mm -hmm. whether you are asking for forgiveness or, or giving it, that's, it's, it helps the heart okay. to express it. Earlier, Dr. Matabuti made a good point. It's about funding and how if, mm -hmm. if it's really in the heart um, mm -hmm. and on the inside, often artists don't worry sometimes about the funding um, I'm a business writer, so I do look at the bottom line in terms of, in, as well as still being, considering myself an artist. How do you merge the two, looking at the bottom line and still um, mm. reaching an audience, an authentic yeah. audience, well, you, you I know, need doing you. authentic if work? If you're a business writer, then I need you <laughs> to help me out <laughs> but with mine, because honestly, um, 
it's a challenge for me to to remember that we have to get financially stable. And you received several funding. And um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I've been pretty successful in terms of my work getting funded. But I find that the the grant writing process is is way more difficult now. I mean, there's filmmakers everywhere, and there's artists everywhere trying to apply for the same pool, which has shrunk. And you know what's happened on Wall Street has really greatly impacted the trickle down effect. It's like trickle down to nothing. So I applied for a grant last week, and I was number fourteen seventy five. You know, wow. for was it a global or national national grant okay. for ten projects that they're going to fund. And so I looked at that. I said, okay, fourteen. You know, one thousand four hundred seventy four people before me <laughs> applied for this. You know, twenty thirty thousand dollars, which is only going to be a portion of what I need to finish my project. So maybe we need to start looking at other creative ways, right. you know. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you just have to kind of develop a community. I feel like a lot of it is just having a community that wants to also support. And with the Internet, there's a lot of grassroots ways mm -hmm. that you can right. you can kind of get your funding out Kickstarter there. Kickstarter and those types exactly. of, of uh, websites. Kickstarter, a couple others. Yeah. Um, we're uh, down to just yeah. a few minutes. Oh, okay. So if you... Um, but I do know Kickstarter has become dot com. Mm -hmm. I believe it is. Yeah. It's become, um, in terms of grassroots raising money, um, funds for yeah. projects. Um, last last thoughts, Dr. Madabudi. Well, I think most artists are not um, entrepreneurial, and they generally learn that as they could create their art. Um, most I mean, when I published my this is the thirty first book, Honoring Genius. Well, my first book was Staying Black, and I published it myself and hit the streets, selling it on street corners. I think that artists are, by nature, guerrilla warriors. Mm -hmm. And what we do, we share that with other people. But we have to move toward the institutionalization of mm -hmm. good thought, right thought, and right actions and right words. Very good, okay. Um, Corey, well, last thoughts. With what we do, it's, I just think about a song by Living Color called Pride. And part of the lyrics go, relate to me as me, not what you see on TV. Mm -hmm. And I think that putting out not just expressions from Inglewood, but books from Third World Press, people always want to say, this is the hood. Well, no, it's the south side of Chicago, you know, call it that. And it's just like, you want to call this the hood? Well, look, look at what's coming out of it. Don't just read newspapers and read page one and page two. Mm -hmm. Look at what is coming out that you won't see in the mainstream media because mm -hmm. it's not, this is not the woe is me journal, it's not the shoot em up journal either. We talk about crime because it happens, but there's also a lot of genuine love in the community like there is everywhere else. Okay, and um, sorry, and then Dr. Well, Lee. yeah, I just, it's great to finish off of these points because I feel like to answer also to reflect on your question about how to get other people inspired, I think it's just taking a risk to get to know each other. And sadly in this world, even though we have access to all these technologies, it's making us less able to like sit on a bus and say, hey, what do you do for a living? Or that's a nice, you know, ring you have there. What's that mean? Just getting a chance to see past somebody or something and get out of ourselves a little bit and realizing wow you know what we're all the same like we our families all believe the same things we just mm -hmm. come in different mm -hmm. shades and styles okay all righty um sorry we'll have to have a part two dr matabuti as as we've shared today activism is a choice perhaps use your voice for the betterment of society thank you for joining us today on the professors mm -hmm.